How can I get involved? How can I flow in? You know exactly where everything's at. And then you have someone come in. They're like, So awesome to be in the house of the Lord this morning. You know, but my God is a mighty God. So we're going to give him a piece of our mind this morning. Amen. 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 The enemy has no authority in this place over our lives, over our situations, because we serve the Lord of Lord and the King of Kings. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we just come before your holy throne this morning. We give you all the praise, honor, and glory, Heavenly Father. We honor you in this place. Heavenly Father, I just pray for your Holy Spirit to really guide and lead this service this morning, that he would have his way with each and every one of us. As your word goes forth, that it will accomplish what it set out to accomplish, and will not, not return back void. So, Father, I just thank and I praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. amen. I just want to welcome all of you to our Sunday service this morning. Praise God. Doesn't the church look beautiful? Yeah. Me and Ed were here since, like, for this morning. <laughs> <laughs> right? Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we got a few uh, messages in line that's going to end on Christmas Eve. And I titled it, The Gift Exchange. And today we're going to talk about exchanging our worry for God's peace. Amen. Amen. You know, during this time, it's the most awesome time. You know, before we go further, I want to... Yesterday, we went to... Um, we were parked on Coors and Bridge, and we were selling some stuff, and my mom made a bunch of arrangements and stuff, and uh, so we were there selling, and my mom's real shy, and I pretended that we were doing a live Facebook video so my mom started running to her the truck and she was leaning over and but I was actually just recording a little video and man she was just cracking up and so when I showed her the video she really thought I had posted it on Facebook but I had posted another video but she was so shy and and stuff but it was awesome to see my my mom smiling and laughing and having a good time So during this time of year, it's the most beautiful time, but in a lot of ways, it's the most stressful time. The reason it's the most stressful time is because we're like, we need to get gifts, and we need to do this, and we need to do that, and we need a plan to bake, we need a plan to visit, and we don't want to leave anybody out, and if we leave them out, what are they going to think? But the thing about during this time, it should be a time of year that brings the most peace. Because it's when the Prince of Peace was born. It's when we have to exchange our worrisome for His perfect peace. You know, during this time we get so busy, we get sidetracked on all the shopping, and now it's like we get sidetracked on all the standing in lines, right? Before we used to worry about standing in lines inside of the store, now we have to worry about standing in lines outside of the store. So, so Jesus addresses worry head on on the Sermon of the Mount. This is one of my favorite sermons that Jesus preached. It was, it's amazing because it went straight to the point about worry and about how He has brought us peace and how we should Trust in God and not trust in the things of this world. So the clarification, there's a difference between worry and caution. Okay? We should worry, 
worry about dangerous situations, there's also a difference between worry and wisdom. Conservative in your decision making doesn't mean you're worrying. Okay? It just means you're wise in the decisions that you ought to make in seeking the Lord first. Another clarification we also uh, have is uh, talking about certain kinds of anxiety and that that have to do with trauma. You know, during this time, we experience so much death and so many people end up committing suicide and taking their own lives. And why do they do that? It's because of the, all the anxiety and all the worry of everything, of paying the bills, of, you know, they rack up their credit cards. Now they don't know how they're going to pay for it. All for trying to be generous to, to one another and stuff. But sometimes we get sidetracked with the world because the world has commercialized Christmas. It's so commercialized. And it's sad that it's even commercialized in the church. And we don't, we forget the true meaning about Christmas. We forget the true meaning about our Savior that was born. You know, because without Jesus' birth, there would have been no resurrection. So he had to be born in order to be resurrected. He had to die in order to be resurrected. Worry is allowing your mind to dwell on potentially negative outcomes beyond our actual control. So if you've got your Bibles, turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. We're going to read 25 to 34. Matthew 6, 25 to 34. Amen? Amen. And the word of the Lord says, Therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is not life more, fo more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air, for they neither sow nor reap. nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? See, at the end of that verse, that scripture, it goes to show the value that God had put in us. Okay? Which of you, by worrying, can add one cubit to his, his stature? So why do you worry about clothing? Consider, consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. And yet I say to you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? All you of little faith, Therefore do not worry, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things, but seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Amen. So no need to worry because it doesn't help. How many of us have has worrying actually helped us, got us through situations? Jesus addresses this very explicit, explicitly in verse 27. He says, can any of you add one moment to his life span by worrying? How many of our lives have been expanded because we worry so much? This question meaning that it doesn't need an answer. The obvious answer is no. You cannot add a single day to your life by worrying. 
But worrying can affect us physically. It can affect us emotionally. How many of us have been there before? Worry cannot add a single minute to your life. Worry cannot add a single dollar to your bank account. How many of our bank accounts have grown because we worry so much? Worry cannot add a single point to your GPA. Worry cannot impress your boss. Worry cannot help your kids behave better. Worry cannot increase your church attendance or help your preaching. Worry cannot strengthen your marriage. Worry cannot help us at all. Worrying can have negative effects in your life. In our life, by worrying, it can affect us physically, mentally, spiritually. Worry can damage your health. Worry can damage your relationships. Worry can rob your joy. Worry can rob opportunities. Our worry can affect ourselves. Our worry can affect others. Our worry can affect our relationship with God because we're not putting our trust in Him. You know, it's one thing, of, it's one thing to worry and it's another thing to be concerned about something or, or take precautions about something. But sometimes I think we kind of, we kind of think of them as the same, which they're not the same. Taking caution of situations is using the wisdom God has given you. But there's no need to worry. Sometimes we're worried so much about the future that it doesn't allow us to live today, to fulfill God's plan for today, because we're concerned about tomorrow, but we got to remember that if we can't get through today, there ain't going to be no tomorrow. But most of our lives is spent on worrying about things that are out of our control. Wouldn't it be better that since we're not in control of them, give them to the one who is in control of everything? And that's to the Lord. And I'm not saying... There's things in our life that work, that concerns us and stuff like that. What I'm saying is that everything that takes place in our life, instead of worrying about it, let's give it to the Lord. Because it's not going to do us any good by worrying about our situation, our financial situation. and Because God is always going to watch out for you and He's always going to take care of you. You don't see the birds knocking on your doors. Saying, hey, you got a sandwich? You know what I'm saying? Or you got some peanut butter seeds? Whatever they eat, you know? God always provides for them. And the scriptures say, ain't we more important than them? Look at how beautiful the grass grows. Even when somebody does not even water their grass, a lot of times the grass still remains green. Why? Because the Lord is feeding that seed. The Lord is watering that grass. And that leaves me a little bit worried about our grass in our home. Because my dad, I mean, everything my dad touched grew. I mean, he can plant a seed in a rock and it would grow. So that concerns me a little bit. So I'm, I've been doing research now and stuff to make sure that we maintain his grass, his lawn, everything that my dad put his hand with, uh, that we maintain it, taken care of, and we maintain it good. So that's when we turn to YouTube, right? Because my dad would use different, because because uh, grass and, and flowers and these things, they take vitamins as well. And my dad would put all these different kind of vitamins, you know, and like before springtime, for that way, when, once it started getting watered, then they would... They will start to take effect. But anyway, that's another story. But see, worrying about it's not going to get it to look greener. See, when we're cautioned about something, it calls us to action. It calls us to do something about it. And worrying doesn't. Worrying kind of like disables us. See, worry only has negative effects. One might respond, Pastor, if I don't worry, I won't get important stuff done. You know, my wife, my wife is 
I love her so much. She's the most amazing woman, beautiful person that I know. But she never stops. She never stops and she like overwhelms me sometimes. Like I'm like, babe, slow down, slow down, remember that. Tomorrow's another day, babe. Oh, I need to get to the post office, I need to do this. And she has a big old list on the refrigerator and she marks off everything that she's done, you know. So I'm like, wow. But I tell my wife, I'm like, babe, I'm like, you know, just do one thing at a time. She's trying to, she's boiling the water as she's cutting grass. She's cutting grass as she's feeding the dog. It, it's just like, I'm like, babe, just do one thing at a time, get one thing done, and then we, but she like gets a bunch of stuff done and gets them all done at the same time. She's like, okay, the water's hot, the grass is cut, the dog's fed, boom, all at the same time. But sometimes it stresses her out. And she's like, oh, I didn't get this done. I didn't get that. I'm like, babe, just do one thing at a time. Just one thing at a time. You know, what for stress ourselves out about what we should do and the things that need to get done. So she kind of, I'm like, okay, babe, I'm just going to my shop, okay? Call me and if you need me to do anything. So, but a lot of times I tell her, you know what? Do you need to go to the grocery store? Give me the list and I'll go. But what's funny is that I'm calling her from the grocery list. Babe, where do you find this? Babe, where do you find that? Babe, where? Okay. Yeah, like, do you want the Walmart brand? Do you want the original? I mean, what, what do you want? You know, I think, uh, <laughs> I think me and my brother here can, me and my brother Scott here can, can see eye to eye and that one, uh, it's because how we don't do a lot of shopping. They like already know, go to aisle 16 and to the left, to the right, on the bottom. If they're not there, go to the end by the, by the eggs. That's where you'll find them. And I'm like, okay, babe, you know, because she says, well, isn't there anybody there that you can ask? And I'm like, yeah, but they like making me go in circles. They're like, just aisle 19. And I'm like, well, aisle 19, there's like a million things in aisle 19. Sometimes I need them to be a little more specific, right? But when I call my wife, she's very specific because she visits the stores very often. So that's what I try to do. I try to, but it was just as good as her going shopping because I, she's not able to do what, what she's supposed to do because she's on the phone with me telling me where these items are. So, but anyway, I tried to help. <laughs> Concern gives way to planning. Worry gives way to fear. Concern leads to healthy attention. Worry leads to unhealthy anxiety. Concern moves you to action. Worry immobilizes you. Planning for tomorrow is time well spent. Worrying about tomorrow is time, is time wasted. See, Jesus concludes this passage by saying in verse 34, Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So what better advice than to receive the Lord's advice? Saying, let tomorrow worry about its own things. Let, because tomorrow there's going to be, there's going to be a love trouble for tomorrow. He gives us enough grace to get us through the day. And he'll get us enough grace, give us enough grace to get us through the next day if, if we're still here. See, each day has enough to occupy our minds. Why would you want to add any worry to what we already have? Why are we so concerned about things that are out of our control? Okay, now with the shopping and stuff, people are so crazy out there in the, in the shopping world. That they like, they're like, I don't care if my neighbor has anything. I just want to make sure that I have something. Mm -hmm. So what do they do? They buy all the supplies, all everything that they they want or that they think they need. Now their neighbor, because they're not concerned about somebody else, they're not concerned about their neighbor that's not having. So they want to stock up. How many of you seen that happen in the, when the first round of toilet paper came out? It's like, wow, who would ever think 
ever, never in a million years would I think that toilet paper was going to be so popular. <laughs> they even banned... <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to see, if, like, understand the people. You know what I'm saying? I guess it would be important. I mean, but <laughs> but you know what? If there's nothing going in your stomach, you're not gonna need toilet paper. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, you would think that oh, you guys are too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh man see so there's no need to worry because it doesn't help us there's no need to worry about what's taking place because it's not gonna whether it affects us head on or if it affects us in the future it doesn't matter I mean it's gonna affect us one way or the other but putting our trust in Christ putting our trust in Jesus allows us to give our worries to him knowing and trusting that He will provide for our needs, knowing that He's going to bring in the ramen noodles or whatever we eat, the pozole or the food. or Because if these things that are created, that God created, the animals and, and everything, I mean, when do you ever, I mean, it's rarely that you see an anorexic wild animal the only anorexic animals that you see are the ones that are taking, being taken care of by people that don't feed them. But a wild animal, you never see him all flaquito, all skinny. How many of you have seen bears up close in the wild? I just seen it on YouTube. But when you see them, you don't see them all skinny and stuff because God takes care of them. God clothes them. God keeps them warm. Why do bears hibernate? Who told them that? They went to bear school growing up? No, it's because God is already, God is the one that's helping them. God is the one that's guiding them through this process. Everything that they, they do, they've learned by their Creator. So there's no need to worry because God knows what you need. He knows what we need. See, sometimes I think we get our needs met, uh, um, yeah, we get our needs and our wants like they're both the same thing. They're not the same thing. The Bible tells us that He will supply all of our needs according to His riches and glory. All of our needs, whatever we need to survive. It might not be the Mazagari car. A lot of you might not even know what that is, but that's a car that i seen on YouTube. It just popped up, okay? Two million dollars for a vehicle, for a car. I'm not talking about those things. I'm talking about what you will need to survive, what you will need to move forward, what you will need. He will supply all of your needs, all of our needs. But do we trust Him? Do we trust Him by, by saying, Lord, you know what? I'm going to give this worry to you. Somebody in our family gets sick. We start to worry. We start to panic. What if this happens? What if that happens? Does that help us? No, it doesn't help us. But by giving it to the Lord, saying, Lord, you are the you are his creator. You know what he needs. You know what he needs to survive. You know what it what he needs or she needs to overcome this illness, this sickness. In verse 30, 30, 26, it says, Consider the birds of the sky. They don't sow or reap or gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they? See, God sees us as valuable people. He sees so much value in us. See, I think there's very little explanations needed for this point. Okay? The birds and other animals, for that matter, have plenty of food to eat. You rarely ever hear of wild animals dying of starvation. Because God is taking care of them. God's natural created order has provision built in it in for feeding his creations. God provides for his cre creation. 
how much more does God provide for the pinnacle of his of his creation of us of human beings and we more important than they didn't the Lord give us rule over all the fish of the sea all the animals of the the planet didn't and we supposed to rule over them then ain't we more important than they are you know this morning on my way to pick up it I was listening to to the radio and they were interviewing this woman um, about giving blood and and you know she has a, a ministry here giving blood and donations and stuff like that and then the interviewer asked her how old do you have to be to give blood and she says well you have to at least be 16 years of age and have your parents consent and then she started saying we have amazing testimonies there's been kids that have come out of tragedy that they want to do this for their 16th birthday and so that her and the mom and the dad they go and give blood and and then she goes on and says but she needs to have the parents consent and it dawned to me I'm like really a 13 year old does not need a parents consent to have an abortion but needs a parent's consent to draw to give blood something's wrong with that picture don't you all agree something's wrong with that it's just showing you how our society has shifted its values our society has devalued life there's no value to life anymore we're just a bunch of robots that you say jump and you jump that's not life God created us for a purpose and to fulfill his purpose we must trust him and seek him with everything that we have you know Matthew 6 33 is like defines it's like the gospel the Bible the Word of God in a nutshell you can't receive his blessings until you seek first his kingdom you can not receive everything else until you seek first his kingdom I think there's very little explanation needed for this point okay as we just read how much more does God provide for us so why do we worry our culture may be losing its value for human life we see it right in front of our eyes but rest assured that God has not lost his value for human life. We are his prize. We are his people. We are his favorite in all the universe. You and I are God's favorite people. Let's look at um, verse 28 and 29 and 30. And why do you worry about clothes? Observe how the wildflowers of the field grow. They don't labor or spin thread. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all the, his splendor was adorned like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, won't he do much more for you, you of little faith? Jesus' point here is not about exactly which flower is adorned, but the best, but that God adorns the flowers of the field the point translates very easily for us if God can clothe the flowers of the field the lesser part of creation won't he also clothe human beings you and I the greatest part of creation just think about that so do we trust God in this matter do we trust that you are so important to God, more important than all the rest of creation? Do we trust God with our life? Do we trust God with our finances? Do we trust God with our children? Do we trust God with our relationships? Do we trust God with everything about us? The enemy tries to come, kill, steal, and destroy. He wants to come and, and take us apart take us away from the Lord he wants to come and discourage us he wants to come and keep us away from God he wants to come and 
have his way with us. But so many times we give way to him. We give room for him. We allow him. We open up doors for him to come. And we're like, man, I don't know how this happened. We allow him to come and have his way with us at times. Hmm. So do we trust God in this manner? Do, do you trust that you are important to God, more important than all the rest of the creation? Do you trust that God can provide for you? Do you trust that God knows what's best for you? Do we trust God? Do we know what's best for us or does God know what's best for us? When, when we started working out our own plan, how did that go for us? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So we have to trust Him with everything that we have. Because we got to remember that everything belongs to Him anyway. Everything belongs to Him anyway. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. He is our creator. And for those of us that have given ourselves to Him, He is our Father. Everything that we need comes from Him. James tells us that the book in, in James 1.17, that every good and perfect thing comes from Him. Food, clothing, money, family, faith, love, grace, forgiveness. It all comes from our Creator God. It all comes from our Heavenly Father. And towards the end of verse 30, Jesus even challenges our faith. You of little faith, we're concerned with our food and our finances and fashions, but Jesus is concerned with our faith because our focus is messed up. Our focus is twisted. Our focus is not on the right things. Our focus has to remain on Christ, our Lord. Our focus has to remain Jesus. That's what's going to bring peace. That's what's going to allow us to, to exchange our worry for His peace. To keep our eyes and our focus on Jesus. And then my, one of my favorite scriptures, and this was our year scripture for the church, was Matthew 6.33. And it's so awesome how it tied into this message because it just puts everything into perspective. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. No need to worry, because what we really need is God. What is it that we gain the world in exchange for our soul? That's not a pretty good, that's not a wise choice to make. Why are we concerned more with what's going on around us instead of being focused or being concerned more with how many people are going to hell because they don't know Jesus, because they don't know the Lord. So are we using, are we allowing God to use us for His glory in winning souls for the kingdom? See, Jesus started this passage off with this thought in verse 25. I, therefore, I tell you, don't worry about your life. Don't worry about your life. What you will eat or what you will drink or about your body, what you will wear. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? Jesus is telling us that there's more to life than food and clothing or any physical necessity. Jesus didn't say these things don't matter. Jesus didn't say not to concern ourselves with the things of this world, but to trust Him. Then He tells us what the greater thing is. So what's greater? Seek first. Seek first. Seek first the kingdom of God. When we seek God and His ways, find first and foremost, these other things will all work out. The law fall into place. But we must seek first the kingdom of God. We have to seek first the kingdom of God. Like, yeah, Pastor, it's easy for you to say, but you don't understand my struggle. You don't understand my problems. Exactly, I don't. 
That's why come, don't give them to me, give them to God. Because He understands. He can help you. He can deliver you. He can give you that peace where there is no peace. He can give you that hope where there is no hope. He can give you so much more than anyone can ever attempt to give you. We need to get our priorities straight. And everything else will fall into place. Everything else will fall into place when we prioritize our life. So many times we have this circle, you know, you know, you know the God circle, you know, you got God, you have husband, wife, and then children. But a lot of times we're all out of the circle because we're not trusting Him. We're not believing Him. See, we need to remain in His Word. But not only that, we need to allow His Word to remain in us. That in itself will bring peace to your life. Regardless of what anybody has ever said, regardless of that, that negative report that you got from the doctor, regardless of, of, of anything that might be going on in your life, regardless of it, He will give you peace during that difficult time in your life. You know, I've experienced a lot of a lot of death and, and people dying around me and and stuff like that and family members. But it was so much different when I lost my dad. But the peace that I felt, the peace that overtook me, the peace that came upon me. Was I can't even explain. I know that God has been under control. God, He knows exactly what is needed. His peace will sustain you. His peace will deliver you. His peace will demolish that fear that's in your heart. We need to recalibrate and refocus our lives on what's most important. What's most important? What's most important to us? Yeah, Pastor, but you know I have to work. I have to work. I, you know, I, they had overtime and I have to work. So many times we think, we're like, well, God wants me to work, you know, but I'm so tired now that, that I can't even go to church. I'm so tired now that I can't spend time in prayer with Him. I'm so tired now that I can't even open up His Word because i got to work. But God wants me to work. I need to provide for my family. Yes, absolutely. But you're putting your trust in your job instead of putting your trust in God. And I think it happens to all of us, sister. We're like, oh, I need to pay this bill. I need to pay that bill. This has to come. And we try to justify our sin. We try to justify our separation from God and why we feel the way we feel. We're like, but God wants me to work. Yes, He does. But at what cost? At what cost? We can never compromise the gathering together, coming together in assembly. Why? Because we are here to lift each other up. We are here to encourage each other. We are here to pray for one another, especially during this time. And sometimes one of our things is, you know, but they just, there comes a time when we got to put our foot down and say, you know what? I can't. I have church. I have to do this. I have this. And we have to let them know right from the get-go. And I'm talking about our bosses because I had to let my bosses know God and God always provides a way when we really truly want to seek Him with all of our hearts. He'll always make a way to make it possible. He'll always give you favor. But we can't compromise. We have to stop compromising our faith. We have to stop compromising 
who we are in Christ. And then he says in verse 31 and 32, So don't worry, saying, What will we eat? Or what will we drink? Or what will we wear? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, and your Heavenly Father knows that you need them. So remember, in this context, the Gentiles means the non-Jewish or godless people. Okay? Jesus says that the godless people put their priorities on these things. But we shouldn't. Why shouldn't we? Because we have the Lord on our side. I've been trying to fix my glasses, so now I just have one lens. I hope you guys didn't catch that. Did you guys catch that? My glasses just broke. So why is it so easy to take our focus off of the Lord? Because the world has made it so easy. Watching service online is nothing compared to coming in person. The enemy is making this online. I mean, it's good online, good. Using that platform to for the Lord. But it should never, it should never, ever take over our coming together as a body of Christ. But now we're... They have us so much and fewer, like, we have to catch it online. I can't go out anywhere. I talk to people and they're like, yeah, we, we watch it online. We, we do. I'm like, but it's not the same. Yeah, but, you know, you can see the fear in people's eyes, the fear in people's faces. And us as believers, we're buying into all that. We're allowing that thing, those things to come and, and, run our, and run us. See, godless people should be focused on earthly things because that's all they know. And that's their prize. They don't know the greater prize. I don't know how that faith is greater than food. They don't know that charity is greater than clothing. They don't know that grace is greater than pain, than gain. They don't know that love is greater than luxury. They don't know that the blessing of God and God Himself far outweigh the needs of this world. They are focused on these things. Followers of God should be focused on God. God knows what we need. Seek Him first and foremost daily. Worry is unnatural. Nature doesn't worry. Worry is unhelpful. It doesn't actually change anything in our lives. Worry is unchristian, if you want to put it that way. It reflects a lack of faith. How to give God your worry and experience His peace. Let Jesus be King. Let Jesus be King of your life. Let Him be, let Him reign over your life. Let Him be the foundation of your life. Let Him be the one that holds everything together in your life. Which literally, the cross is what holds our life together. I don't know if you guys have heard of this protein molecule. It's called laminin. Okay? There's a, this is literally what holds our body together. And there's literally millions of them in our body and our DNA which holds literally our body together so I ask you to go and look up laminin it's actually a cross a protein molecule shaped as a cross the cross of our Lord is literally holding us together so ask yourself this question what deserves the most prominent in my thought life King Jesus, the Lord. You know, during this, this season, during this time, allow the joy of the Lord be your strength. Allow God to be your focus. Because we live in a dying world. We live in a world that is hopeless right now. And God wants to utilize us as His believers to bring joy to the world. 
Joy to the world because He has come. But if that joy isn't living within us, how can we share that joy with others? If we're still pouting about our life, if we're still feeling sorry about ourselves, I think there has to come a time in our lives where we have to quit the grieving process and we have to move forward and allow the joy of the Lord be our strength, be the one that upholds us, be the one that sends us out. Because as long as we still have that worry in us, it's not going to allow us to take that first step because we're going to be having so much fear and anxiety. How important is it for us to share that joy with others? Very important. The Bible says, He who wins souls is wise. But why don't we bring souls to the Lord? Why don't we win souls to the Lord? Which we should be doing is because we don't have the confidence in the King of Kings that we serve. We don't have the confidence. We don't have that joy of saying, I serve the mighty King Jesus. I serve the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. He is my Savior. He is my rock. Another one is we have to live one day at a time. How many of you live three days at a time? <laughs> Even if it's possible, it can be done. You can only live one day at a time. You know, it's almost been 14 years that I quit drinking. This August will be, August 26th will be 14 years. And I still take it one day at a time. I don't think myself like, oh, I've already made it. No, I haven't made it yet. Till Jesus comes for me. See, because if I'm thinking of the temptations tomorrow, then I'm going to fall into the temptations of, of today. Can't do that. God gives you enough power and strength for today, but not for tomorrow. We don't, He doesn't equip you to prevent all the future situations you're going to go through. He gives you the strength to deal with what comes today. Last but not least, lean on the faithfulness of God. Talk to God about it. Bring it to the Lord in prayer. Let Him remind you of your, His promises. Open up the Word of God. Allow the Word to saturate you. Allow the Word to do something to you. Allow the Word to change you. See, because none of us can remain in the Word and remain the same people. It just it can't happen. That's how come the Bible is the living Word because it's alive and active. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Cutting in, cutting out. See, the, the, the Word of God is not just an ordinary book. It's not just a book by, by a bunch of nobody that wrote it. No, it's the inspired Word of God. It's the heart of God. He's sharing with us His heart. From, from Genesis all the way to Revelation, it's like a big, big love story. And what He's had to do so that we can come back to Him. to redeem us back to Himself. Philippians 4, 6 says, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving let your requests be made known to God. There are two things Paul says to this to do with worry. Tell God about it. Take it to Him in prayer. Thank God for what has done, for what He has done. How many of us have thanked God during a storm? You know, when we have those that thankful heart during a storm, it changes our reaction to the storm. We start to see that storm as an opportunity, right? Because there's nothing that happens in our lives without having an opportunity to share with others. 
storms come, storms go. But the Word of God is settled forever here on earth as it is in heaven. The Word of God never changes. The Word of God is true today, yesterday, and tomorrow, and forevermore. Gratitude refocuses our minds on the goodness of the gift of God rather than the problem around us. And verse 7, Philippians verse 7, it says, And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You can dwell on your problems or you can dwell on God's promises. When you let Jesus be king, live, day, live a day at a time, lean on God's faithfulness, he will guard your heart and your mind with peace. How many of us need peace in our life? We all need peace. But there's a difference between worldly peace and the peace of God. Because the peace of God doesn't mean that you're not in a storm, but you will have peace through that storm. Did, did, when, that st when Jesus was on the boat, did he panic? He had peace. The peace that only his father brought. Go ahead, Daniel. The peace that only Jesus brings. I pray and hope that this message has been a blessing to you. I want to give you an opportunity right now. If you've never given your life to Jesus, if you've never given your heart to Jesus, I want to have the opportunity to pray with you right now. You know, the Bible says that we must be born again in order to enter the kingdom of God. So right now I just would like to pray with you. If you want to just repeat this prayer with me, just say, Heavenly Father, I choose to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And you raised him from the dead on the third day to give me a new life. So now Jesus, I receive you into my life as my Lord and Savior. I give myself to you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you just prayed that prayer, I want to welcome you to the family of God. I want to welcome you. You know, right now the, the, there's a, a party going on in heaven on your behalf for making this decision. I just want to invite you, if you're in the Albuquerque, New Mexico area, I want to invite you to Majesty Worship Center if you don't have a home church. Our address is 3250 Coors Boulevard, Northwest, Suite B. If, you're in, if you live in our area, but I just highly recommend that you go to a Bible-believing church to, to get involved and, and to learn and to grow in your faith. Let them know that you gave your life to Jesus. I just want to pray with you right now. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Father God, I just want to pray for the viewer right now, Heavenly Father, that, that this seed that was planted in their lives, Father God, that it would flourish, Heavenly Father. Father God, I just pray right now, Father God, that I will grow, that you would lead them and guide them into a, a, a good church where they can call the home, Father God, where your truth is being preached, where your truth is being taught, Heavenly Father. Father God, I just pray blessings over them in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching. Once again, God bless you.